If you had to coach yourself today, what would you tell you that you had to do? Yeah, to not take score too soon. Take a break. Just to not be so stuck in, in what you envisioned. Take a long, deep breath. <laughs> today I want to talk about comfort zone, the repetition of all of of behaviors that we already know we should do and we don't do, it's actually our comfort zone. We know all of that. We know this concept. It's a place that we don't grow. It, for you, in that sense, it, it's not comfortable to actually stop, to breathe. Your comfort zone, in that sense, is to react, is to hit. Some people cannot react. They are too passive. So For them, that's their comfort zone. Why you cannot do? Because it's uncomfortable for you, for you actually to breathe, you know, to stop, you know. It's uncomfortable. It's painful to change. I cannot feel the pain you feel. You know, nobody can feel each other's pain. Why we should cross the comfort zones? Because we want to become more. Growing equals happiness. So I believe that we all that are here understand that. And that's why we are looking for self-development. What's, what's your comfort zone right now? What, what area of your life you feel you're seated in the comfort zone? You're going to share that in the room. I think my ego is too big in the sense that if I will go out on a limb and maybe have less money and less like that for a while before I like, but, my, but I would grow. I think I hear my mother, my ex-husband going. So I think it's my ego like keeping me and saying, yeah. do not do that because you cannot hear them say she hasn't got a job and stuff like that. This attachment is really huge connected with ego. There is no meaning for us to be attached to something if in the end everybody's going to die. You're attached to this role as a mother. And that's I like see. the old way of seeing it. And I'm, I'm like scared of stepping in and owning. I, I know that it's my ego thing. And I'm, so, so you're absolutely right. You got spot on. Good channelizing there. <laughs> Because yeah, it's yeah. This attachment, that's something that really helped us move from the comfort zone. But before we go forward, I would like to listen from uh, each one of you. What's your comfort zone now? My comfort zone? In sports, I mean, in, in uh, athletics, is to run the 400 meters. But I add an 800 just an hour after that. I was like dying with one 400 meters. Wow, what did I do to myself? <laughs> But then I said, I said, no, I need to. I need to go through it. Otherwise, if I get scared and step back, it will stay in my subconscious that I'm, I didn't get the courage to go through. But then when I went through, yeah, I, was, I, was, I was jumping like a rabbit. You just shared with us outstanding formula. And I would, I would like to, to ask you one thing. Yes. This formula that you have is perfect, okay? Mm -hmm. So I would like to think about an area of your life that if you yes. would apply the same formula, you would get a lot better results. Which area of your life would you think you can apply this formula to get even better results? Not the sport area, another area. Yes real estate development that I didn't do and I'm scared of it and I'm uh, holding on a project for so like four or five years now and I, I'm scared to jump on it if I, I, I don't do it I will not learn I need to go yeah. through that process Zach he had like a, an outstanding formula for one area of his life that he shared with us you know every time I come there I challenge myself and I put it more so that formula really works For him, we, we could see, we could feel his energy and that he challenged himself. If there is one area of your life that you know you are really, really great, you can apply the same mindset in the other area. So many times we already have the formula to go out of your comfort, our own comfort zone in all the other areas of your life, but we don't apply and we don't know how to do. But we have the formula in other areas of our lives. Yeah. How do you apply the good things with people that you very much love, but you don't know how to express stuff to them? We've been working together before, so it makes some sense for me. What I'm talking about Zach, Zach, he has a success formula for one area of his life mm -hmm. that he can apply in another area of his life to get the same success. This is just a technique. I think that if you go now, To the, the disattachment because okay. your situation involves a lot of emotion when you talk there is a lot of emotion in the situation mm -hmm. 
It's a lot yeah. of uh, entangled energy. I believe that if you start working uh, disattachment, that energy will dissolve if you actually start breathing before reacting. You will help the disentanglement to so stop. Yours is, is still a lot of energy. In, you mm -hmm. know, emotions. That is a lot of emotions inside. Yeah. You you probably need to take out the attention you're giving to that by the disattachment. There's too too much attention. That is a lot of energy still. When you talk, I see yeah. like energy that is still like this. You have to soft soften the energy. I get the exact like the technique, and I, I can maybe apply that like further on. But first, I have to see a little bit. Uh, the layers maybe or, or the, the the like you said the whole energy I can share mine it was also like kind of the same like a person that you care about but that you have many attachment with uh, both personally professionally and uh, then i needed to to because there was so much um, attachment it was hard to to break free kind of because the brain was so entangled with fear because the brain had so much uh, connection for this person like safety and so on i needed to go to a point where my pain became so painful that i was ready to give it all up and then i was starting with the big things if i can't have a career in in this area um, that i thought this person could provide for me I give that up. I prefer to have my freedom. I give it up. It's okay. Um, and then it, it it was so many connections that it nearly comes down to like a lot of safeness. And then it also became like ridiculous things. And then I could also say that I have some um, family members who also have attachment to a person that they have a child together where, where there has also been, um, you know, who should you know and then i was thinking about this person and i was thinking i think i would even give up my child i mean i can't say i'm not a parent but i felt like i would shit i would give up on my child that that's how i felt like in the end i would give it up i don't know if that helps but i, I was kind of like breaking it down it really makes sense what you said because as i say this attachment doesn't mean you don't care it's nothing with that it means that that does it, does, does it, uh, this attachment, it's actually freeing yourself. That is a, 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 a phrase that say, you know, uh, this attachment is not that you don't want to have things. It's that things don't have you. As I said, you don't need to have that job or that position. If that position has you in the sense that you feel, you feel so ident identify with that, that takes out your freedom. So this attachment help us to be free and navigate in the world with peace. So when you say, I could, got, I could give up my dream work, I could give up everything, that was because that thing was also uh, uh, owning you. So by freeing that energy, you now own nothing. It's a choice. You are more free. For any new decision or something that is sensitive, emotionally speaking, and we have that uh, the amygdala, the fear that starts building. At that level, at that at that point, if we don't take make the decision, the, the what do you call the rational decision to go through it and quick, it stuck with us and we step back, and that's what it exposes a long period of questioning and sadness that we didn't take the step to face the situation. It could be to communicate with that person. It could be to communicate with oneself to take that step. It could be in sports, in business, in relationship. So anything that you step back and you don't face it, you build your own mind, your own story, uh, that it could be false, totally false. You didn't expose it through, the, through life. You didn't expose it to the, to the other person to have their feedback. Then you can move back and move forward. Anytime you don't move forward, you don't ask, you don't expose, you step in back yeah. and you're living your own environment, your own story, which could not be true. If you're not confronting it, you stay, you stay back in your, uh, in your own zone. You don't grow. And when, but, but when you're exposed to, 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 to it, you confront yes, it, yes, yes, you're yeah. free. You get free.
you get free. Say, oh my God, it was not, it was it was that simple. Find the story that holds you inside of the comfort zone, because in every comfort zone there is a story. I have I had this comfort zone uh, that was like you know I, I I always wanted to do business, you know, in Brazil and in Sweden, but I I was afraid, you know, I was really afraid to do that. And then I remember that I've been repeating. Listen to the word repeating. I've been repeating the same bullshit story that I had for years. And the bullshit story was I was like, you know, I cannot have a business in Brazil and in Sweden yeah, because it's two different countries. It's going to be too complicated. I will not have enough money to do that. I will not have condition to do that. And I don't know if you remember in my event there, OCZ, that I was breaking my the wood, and that was the bullshit I want to break. Is that I cannot create a business in Sweden and in Brazil. At the same time. At the same time. That and that's bullshit. Yeah. You might think, oh, this thing doesn't work. It's not about the exercise. It's about the, the mind programming. And you know, like, like now I'm here in Brazil. I actually overcame that bullshit. You know, I built a... Uh, a house for me by practicing changing my story i actually could get different results that's what we're trying to do here you have a comfort zone but there is a story holding you inside so what we're doing now is to find a story that you are telling yourself of why you are inside of the comfort zone and that story always come after a because how much more specific it's going to be more powerful for you so I wrote down, I can't be professional with my own project because I'm not good enough. How much more specific you will be will help you. I'm not good enough. It's too empty. So I'm going to give an example from me so you understand. I have a new bullshit story. My old story is gone. So, so my, my new bullshit story is I want to build a retreat place here in Brazil. Okay? So... Uh, my bullshit story is like, oh, how, how uh, you know, I cannot do that because I need to be more in Brazil. But, you know, I, I, I didn't start any business here. I'm 13, 13 years in Sweden. I don't have established business here. I don't have clients here. I don't know how, how can I do to be more in Brazil than in Sweden. So all these are, are my bullshit story. I'm creating a story to not help me achieve my own dream a more empowering story for myself so I actually can make that happen. You know what I mean? So how much more deep you'll be in your own answer, it's easier for you to figure out the story. Like, okay, I can make it more specific. Like I can't produce my own uh, like feature movie because I have not done before, because I don't have the skills that it takes. I don't have the team. I don't yes, have yes. Exactly. So that would be a better... Yes, yes. Okay. The bullshit story is that whenever I want to try something new, which in this case is I want to try and start up a, a business around yoga and hiking retreats, um, I can't really start doing it unless I know 100% that it will be successful because otherwise, well, if I don't know I'm going to be successful for 100%, then I might fail, which in the end will lead me to, in my head, believing that I'll disappoint my mother. By having a story like that in your head, that is not another possibility to give a different result. So that's how much power that is on actually knowing our story, because it's many times we navigate in life and we don't know the story we carry on. We just, we just live that story, but we don't know. We are not aware. And we are not we are not aware of, of the results that we are creating. You know, mm -hmm. there is two ways in life. Or we just, you know, accept and okay, that's that's what it is, or we create. That is only two ways. We're gonna write down a story that empowers actually your school, your retreat, the thing you want to create. We're gonna mm -hmm. change the story so we, we start programming that story in our subconscious mind, okay? So we're going to rewrite the story in an empowering way. And then we're going to share with each other our new empowering story. Okay, so can you share with us your new story, Christina, first? Yes. Uh, first, I just want to say it was very powerful. So thank you, Ricardo, for this session. It's always very powerful. Um, I wrote, 
I can yeah. produce my own movie because it needs my perspective. I can find the people and the skill, the skills that complete the mission. By doing this, I don't change only for me, but for anyone like me. It was very powerful, especially when I felt I did it not only for me, but for anyone, you know, like me. That was strong for me. Yes. So my bullshit story was I'm going to be humiliated. I don't have the experience to teach other. And the new story will be, well, I was chosen by others to do this. They believe me, so they think I'm good with people. I will learning by doing and I can handle challenges when they appear and I will learn from them. How do you feel with that story? It feels better. That, that changes everything. That will change the way you feel, the way you behave, the way you think. That will change the whole game. Just keep repeating that. Now it's the reprogramming time, repetition, 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 and actually will become, you know, reality. I don't have the, the amount of experience for that job that I want to uh, apply to. Uh, the bullshit story that I'm an immigrant and a woman and that they would probably take a man with much more experience. And I would not have as much time for my son. This is a really big, big bullshit that, that I'm not capable of running my own business. Not smart enough, not uh, business minded enough and stuff like that reframed it or how you say it for my like serving for my son that's when I got it um because I started out like I'm an infinite being having a human experience I don't have to take everything so personally I might not have the exact background but I have the energy I have the uh, driving force and I have the courage uh to do to do it and that's that's for sure and I will have more quality time for my son because I will be more fulfilled and more happy. And I will teach him uh, by being, by cho choose, choosing uh, these things. Kids learn what you do, not what they, what you say. So when I can teach him that I take a risk, that I, that I do, and I can teach him other stuff, and and maybe have quality times in in. Like it doesn't have to be after five o'clock in the house at the evening. So that's where they kicked in for me. And I will teach him how to grow and how to fulfill himself. That's like the most important for me is for him to know how to choose for himself. I'm going to give myself the permission to be happy and successful. That's for me a big thing. It's, it's strange for us many times to believe that, that our new story could be even true. But doesn't matter how much more we repeat, how much more we repeat, that, that, that will become eventually a reality. We mm -hmm. believe it for so many years that we are not capable, that it's strange to believe that we are. So by repeating, by repeating, by repeating, we're going to make it happen. Like you said, I can get that, but I can't feel it. But when you, when I said, you know, the whole thing got with my son, like, well, I can teach him stuff. That's when it kicked in and that, you know, that, that just started the whole thing. So that, and yeah. I'm going to start from that energy because that is really nice. So that's like what actually gives a, a, a lot of power to the new story and, and to purpose. It's when we have to serve somebody that is always a serving factor. You know, yeah. it's not only for me. You had your, your son in the story. Uh, Christina had like, you know, I will help other people like me. We are not doing only for ourselves. Mm -hmm. When we actually are in purpose aligned, that is the serving factor. It's not that we are like, you know, Mother Teresa's. That's not what I'm talking about. And there's no one to disappoint. But however, there is actually a lot of people to inspire. And particularly when you were talking about your son, um, Dan, I, I was thinking about my niece and my nephew and to actually just be bold and inspire them because what they see is, is what inspires them. You know, so you have new stories to keep repeating, reproducing. And uh, I, can, I can say that, you know, I, I had a great takeaway today from all your answers. That was uh, about the, you know, the serving factor. That for me was like, ah, oh, shit, that's it. That I felt like, okay, this is one, this is the other level that we are aiming for. Because in a way we are trying to, you know, solve our lives, our own problems. But when we're talking about, okay, so, okay, why we want to become so much better, so much happier, 
It's actually to add to the world somehow. In the end, our purpose is a gift to the world. Who we are needs to be a gift to the world, or it's not going to be complete. It's be like only me, 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 me. It's like we need to give somehow. We're going to have to give to feel completely fulfilled. And we all have our own ways to give. There is no right rule. And, you know, we just had to find our way to do that. This is the first time I ever felt that about serving. I never resonated with that, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> because I remember, Ricardo, you had you talked a lot about serve people. And I know you do that a lot in your work. And I was like, yeah, I don't feel like that. <laughs> I just want, I felt like, you know, I want to do my shit. And 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 I think that was important for me as well to do to fulfill me first. But now I feel that I will get another kind of push to do it for generations or to do it for yeah because I think about me in strangers I think about uh, if I do it I can inspire someone else who was in my situation so I think I, that is actually my biggest takeaway to to do to serve people if, if it gives value to others that's the right thing to do you do what you love and give values to others and even if it can just inspire one person then I'm happy, and that in return sort of shines through and, and inspires and makes other people happy. Don't make your bullshit story general, because it became lame. It has really no sense, because each bullshit story needs to be really personalized. And all. And the second thing is to surround yourself time to time to check yourself, as you as you do here, one month at least or once a week, with people that looking for purpose to improve themselves. That's the key, not to get lost in the nature for years, wondering why this is not working. That's my second takeaway. I got all the energy from Zach. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> I got all inspired. <laughs> well, I take away with me uh, the detachment part. Absolutely. I think about uh, uh, Gibran's uh, little poem when he says that the children come through us. They're not ours. They come through us and they are part of life. And oh, I'm, I'm loving this new story. I mean, when I reframed it and I feel like all of us take that, like with the serving part. Oh my God. I mean, I've been trying to understand what is this serving part? How can I serve? Well, I'm, you know, it's lending out the money or not the yeah. money. Is it being there? And it's just by being yourself and just being willing to give. So when I'm willing to give myself the opportunity maybe to just apply, first apply for the job, then I can just show my son that if you apply and you get the job, then do your best and then just be happy. So thank you all for that. Serving, serving, serving was the was the takeaway for me today. Like really, really like that, that that's the way we have to go, you know, to make the us better persons and the, give a little bit of us to the whole. So it, the sessions always get more than I imagine. You know what I mean? That's because we actually mix, mix our own energies and make make this, you know, uh, vitamin. You know what I'm saying? We, sh we make this milkshake of energies and actually comes actually what we need to hear on this day. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Ciao, Thanks. ciao.